no, 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 Metro with headers a little bit ago to have um, a CP2104 instead of an FTDI chip. We also um, made it even skinnier by removing the DC jack, so that's through hole as well. Look at that. And uh, we improved a little bit, we had a couple of design improvements. Um, that is out, but we uh, finally got through all of the um, non soldered version of the Metros. We don't sell a ton of these, but it is something that people do like, so I, I like to stock it. So I'll just, I'll just show this really fast. It's. Um, Arduino Uno compatible. It uses the Atmega uh, 328. Um, and uh, it's got, um, as you see, it's, it doesn't have the header soldered in. So it comes with uh, the raw header. So if you do want to solder them in, you can. Um, I mean, I suggest if you, if you really want the header soldered in, get the version with soldered headers. But you know, you can, you can put the DC jack in or out. You can put these headers in or out. So you get all those um, header connections. Um, it works with all of our shields. You get an on-off switch, the LEDs, the micro USB. You can select whether you want it to be three volt or five volt uh, logic. Um, and yeah, it's just like super skinny. You can see how thin it is. So good for when you want something, maybe you want to solder a shield directly onto it or something, you want it to be as thin as possible. So updated. Okay. Now it comes with a CP2104. Next up, if you're wondering why we have the code SOIL, here's why. Yes. We We've now have. This for a while. Yes, it's it a is. Big deal. I know. I've been meaning to do this for quite a long time, but now it's done. So this is a soil sensor, and a lot of low-cost soil sensors use um, resistive sensing, and on, on purpose, we kind of decided to do something a little bit different. Um, this uses Seesaw, so it's an at SAMD10, which is a microcontroller that has a capacitive touch peripheral, and we actually have one gigantic capacitive touch pad on the bottom here. This is a gigantic capacitive touch pad. And when you touch it, the um, that controller reads that capacitive touch reading and then sends it over I squared, <clears throat> I squared C. You can see here I have a, a STEMA cable. It's got power ground, SDA, and SCL clock and data. So it's standard I squared C. So it works with any microcontroller. We have CircuitPython and Arduino code, so you can use it with Arduino chips and C++. You can use it with Python or, or CircuitPython. You can use it with Raspberry Pi or whatever um, Linux computer or or circuit Python boards. And it also reads the um, temperature. There's a little temperature sensor inside the chip. It's not a great temperature sensor, but it's within like a degree or two, it's gonna be, it'll give you the temperature. So you stick this into the soil up to about this spot. You can see the line. Um, when it gets damp, um, this sensor measures uh, that capacitive increase and sends it out over ice. Does it work C. with circuit Python? It works with circuit Python. Oh, it works with circuit Python. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, okay. Because it's just I squared C, we, we purposely didn't choose to go with one that was analog output because this way you can have multiple sensors. Also, a lot of um, single board computers don't have analog input, so this means you can use it with like anything. Everything's got I squared C, and because there's no exposed um, copper, Phil B did a really lovely silk screen here. It's covered with mask, and so when you when you put it in, it won't oxidize, won't get damaged, um, which happens to a lot of lower cost sensors, even if they're gold plated. Um, they oxidize and, and like, you, you know, the, the differential, the DC voltage differential means that you get like cruft on them and they get dirty and then the resistance fluctuates. With capacitive touch measurement, um, it works great all the time, year round, forever and ever. You, you know, wipe it down once in a while just so it doesn't get super filthy. Um, but this is the, the superior way of doing soil sensing. Is there ways to reprogram the onboard chip? If you'd like, um, there's SWD pads on the back if you are an experienced programmer, we link to um, on GitHub, we have the Seesaw code. You can go there and um, reprogram it. You're, you're kind of on your own because like we don't support that. We sell it pre-programmed. It doesn't come with a bootloader because the chip is too small, but you can use a, a J-Link or ICE or whatever to reprogram the chip if you'd like. Okay, uh, next up, speaking of Circuit Python, we have a little pack. Yes, yeah, this is so adorable. I should say, I, it, um, so just from Carter, and I was like, oh, that's such a good idea. He was like, you should do a little Circuit Python getting started pack using those beautiful purple cases. So you get a purple case, you get a half size breadboard, you get 20 wires, you get um, five 10K resistors, five uh, 560 ohm resistors, a little um, micro USB cable, a switch, a buzzer, RGB LED, um, light sensor, 
red LED, green LED, potentiometer, three buttons, and an itsy bitsy. And um, you specifically wanted the itsy bitsy because it'll fit on the breadboard and give you a lot of space for all these sensors. So this is a great way to just get started and experiment. And because it comes with the itsy bitsy M4, it's really fast. It's, it's great for CircuitPython. Um, you'll be zoom in, you get the sticker, you can see the purple on the sticker matches the case, which isn't on purpose, but it's like, super cool that it does. Um, this is a, a, you know, we, we discounted it a lot, so it's a great gift uh, for someone who, you know, you want to learn microcontrollers, you want to get started easily. We have a great beginner guides that Katni and Carter and the rest of the team have worked on. So this is it, you know, for like 25 bucks, get started, you know, go and learn electronics with CircuitPython. We're using this really fast microcontroller and uh, then you can tote it around in this little box. I thought I'd show the box real fast because it is just so cute. So um, this is the box, it's a little zipper pack so you can, um, it's secure, it's kind of tough so you can put it in your bag. Open it up and you've got your breadboard. You can plug the itsy bitsy into it. You get all of your parts and you can store them here. And then of course you can put that Blinka sticker on the outside or on the back of your breadboard or whatever. And then when you're done, you just, you zip it up and uh, take it home or take it to school or take it to work or back. Now on the board guide that we have, <laughs> I think that's a good place. Someone asked like, well, when should I use a itsy bitsy versus like a feather? And I think the board guide is a good place to look, but do you have like a very concise summary of why you would, the biggest difference why you would decide to the, use one over the other? Yeah, the biggest difference is the itsy bitsy doesn't have a um, lipo charger built in. So it makes it much smaller. The feather is it's much longer. The itsy bitsy is much more compact because it doesn't have that battery connection. Um, but it's still an express board. Um, we have a bunch of itsy bitsy. It's just, it's just really small, but it has a lot of pins. So yeah. it's kind of that in between. It doesn't have mounting holes and it doesn't have a battery charger. Other than that though, it's almost identical. But yeah, it does have yeah. more pins. Okay. And then last up this week, it's here. This is an antique glowing skull. No, it's this case. Um, this was a design from Mike Dole, who's it designed all of our cases. Um, very cool. This is how we develop products. Here. This is how we develop products. We actually. Okay. So, anyways, to, um, <laughs> skull. glass skull not included. Glass or the skull battery. Included. This is this is the case for the circuit playground. Yep, we designed a case. Um, Mike Dole designed a case for circuit playground, and it's great. I think it's the ultimate case. It's perfect for the circuit playground express. It's not designed for the classic. Um, so stick it with the Express. I mean, it might work, but it's really designed for the Express. It's clear, so you can use the LEDs, the light sensors, the infrared in and out. Um, it's not waterproof or weatherproof. Like you shouldn't take this out in the rain. And I mean, it'll it'll protect it, but it's not. You can't dunk it underwater. But it also means that the microphone and speaker, like you know, air can come There's out. A surprise on the back of it. The surprise. We have. Um, well, who designed it? Of course. Mike Dole. We put the designer's name on these things. There's two slots. You can see, so you can put a webbing through it if you want to turn this into a watch or attach it to something. You can you can tie it to something. There's also a quarter twenty nut, which means that you can use a tripod. Maybe you can go to the large thing. Yeah, yeah. So um, most tripods, and this is like a little mini tripod. It has a little piece that fits in, and um, this is a standard size uh, screw. So you can um, attach this in here, and you screw it on. Yep. And then you can attach it to a tripod. So this is good. You know, maybe you don't need a tripod, but there's a lot of camera connectors and mounts that use that screw size. And so if you ever want to attach it like really solidly to something, like this is never going to come off. Um, it comes in two pieces. You can still clip alligator clips to it. You can still touch the capacitive touch pads. You know, not solidly, but you can touch it from the side. You can clip to them. Um, you get the switch. Uh, you could reset it. I'll, I'll plug it in so you can um, see what it's so like. Else, is the, um, the screw thing in it press fitted or is it plastic over molded? It's molded in. It is molded in. Yeah, I mean, if you really pulled, you could probably yank you it out. But it's heat set in. Um, but yeah, we got the reset button and it's nice and, and bumpy. You can press it. You get the two buttons. You got the switch. You can plug in all the cables, battery. It's just a lovely protective case. It's not too chunky, but it is, you know, it does give it a little bit more. It's also, like, safe. nearly indestructible. I tried to destroy it, and I had it with me and when we were testing, and, like, yeah, it is a beautiful case. It's functional, good for kids. Um, it has a mount on the back. You can turn it into, like, a wearable. No tools required to put together. It's yeah. snap fit. Put the back on, slide the switch to the left, put, you know, make sure that the nub is switched to the left, and you put it on, and you're, and you're golden. I mean, it's... Glass skull not included. Yeah, you don't get the skull. Included. Circuit playground not included. 
this but the is, case is this included. symbolizes our imagination. Okay? You can imagine these things. Sometimes they're not real. Sometimes you don't get them all at once. <laughs> Sometimes you have to collect them. One other thing, just to clarify, if you want to use a circuit playground with like a, a biscuit or like a gizmo or a cricket, um, you can't put the screw holes through it. Won't, that it doesn't have enough clearance for that, really. That's right. So um, this is good for standalone use. But if you're going to attach to something else, you probably won't be able to have it in the case while it's attached to something, okay. like electrically. No, 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 no